Hi, my name is Erika Simon and I would like to discuss about the third update to the Libby engine. The Libby engine is a 3D engine I have developed based on an innovative transformation technique for the environment. First of all, um, this engine now is some kind of mini game in which you control a sphere moving around inside a full dynamic environment. First, let's talk about the physics. So, as you can see, the collisions are fairly accurate. Um, this is thanks to the use of um, physical models for each uh, element of the environment. These uh, physical models can be as complex and, uh, and can be as concave as one wish. So, um, I pushed this box downstairs because I wanted to show that uh, the physics happen even very far away from the screen as will happen with the box when it lands on the floor below. And yes, about the model. As, uh, yes, so the physical models are transformed based on the nonlinear technique used for the rendering. So that's what happened to these columns here. And uh, this rendering technique is also quite visible here with the columns. So um, next, let's talk about the one big addition to the engine. That is to say the audio engine. Um, so I decided to make my own sound engine because I wanted to have as much um, control over the audio as possible. For that I use the OpenSL API and uh, I'm quite happy with the result, although it's not quite obvious here for reasons I'll explain later on. So um, yes, with my um, audio engine I can have 100 if not 1000 different sound sources happening at the same time. Otherwise, um, as you can see, the shadows are not perfect. There's a lot of acne happening, even when toggling the depth bias via the Vulkan API. Uh, the reason is because of the low resolution for the shadows, which is unavoidable since um, I'm working on the phone and yes, the power is just not there to have higher resolution shadows. And uh, otherwise, I would like to apologize about the quality of the audio and um, the fairly not smooth video. Uh, the reason for that is I had to use an MNML application in order to record the audio and the video. And as it happened, the audio is recorded via the um, microphone, so it's terrible basically. And the fact that this application has to run at the same time as the, the game basically, uh, has a big impact on the performance, as you can see here. You can also see that the cube landed properly in the background. So, next, let's talk about the, the view distance. Um, it's 5 kilometers, and the shadows for the whole view field is properly um, generated, basically. And uh, the environment is about 10 kilometers long and 5 kilometers wide. It includes about 40,000 individual elements for the environment. Uh, I was able to achieve full smoothness through the use of instancing and some fairly um, sophisticated technique, let's say. Um, right, so um, as you can see, the um, transition between the the close distance rendering and the long distance rendering is fairly um, smooth. Although not perfect, there's still some artifacts and this is something I still need to improve in the um. Next, uh, let's talk about the uh, column in the background. The point was to build and to show that structures can be as uh, artificial and as uh, complex as the concept we want it to be. So we have this huge column-like structure that's about, I think it was a thousand meters high. And if you look closely, you can see that part of the structure is even rotating on itself, casting shadows that change as we go, which is to show how um, dynamic the shadows are in this engine. Uh, otherwise, I would like to talk about the um, uh, the motion of uh, the sphere basically. So this is not programmed. What happened is that um, the motion of the sphere is um, generated through the physics. 
the user doesn't actually uh, impact on the, the motion itself, it just rotates the, um, the sphere and through friction with the ground, the object starts moving around. Uh, so basically the whole animation of the sphere is fully physical. The interesting thing about this um, way of doing it is that uh, you can see some um, physical phenomenon you would see in real life happening also inside the engine. And by that I'm specifically referring to the um, colorless effect, so, um, or centrifugal effect to be more precise. Um, as we'll see once we get inside the structure, which is actually very huge. Um, there's about 800 elements rotating at the same time, which has a huge impact on the performances, but it's still possible. The structure is about 300 meters long to, to give you an idea about how big it is. So let's get inside them. As soon as we get inside, we get this centrifugal effect happening. So suddenly the object starts moving upward the slope, which wouldn't happen if the structure was not rotating. You may also notice that the shadows and the environment are very dynamic and very accurate as well, as you can see the relief of the wall cast, casting shadows on um, the front wall. You can also see that the um, column casts shadows like a thousand meters away on the, the mountain itself. Finally, let's talk about, um, yes, first of all, let's go down so we can have a closer look at um, the column. So one may see that um, the column, despite being huge, has a high amount of details when you get close to it. And yes, I would like to come back to uh, the minigame uh, uh, thing I was talking about at the beginning. So I'm planning on releasing a minigame where you can throw this sphere around in a complex environment somewhere at the end of September, beginning of October. Um, the point is not only to catch the attention of people and to get people to know more about the engine I've been working on, but also to test the engine on as many devices as possible. Indeed, I only have two smartphones on on hand, so this is very little to uh, check the compatibility with all kinds of uh, smartphones, basically. And, um, right, so I'm working on this all alone, so I have to make the, the engine, of course, but also the, the textures, the structures, the models, and so on. So it's a lot of work, and I don't know if I'll be able to make it in time for October. But anyway, so um, as you can see, the, um, the sphere reacts with the complex environment, no matter where it goes, and very accurately too. So this is really the strong thing about this uh, rendering and this engine in general, like the fact that you can have very complex environments and to have full, uh, full uh, in interaction with it. Anyway, um, please look forward to the next video and thank you for watching.